In our breakout sessions for this month, we talked about the fact that every human life is precious in God's sight. Each of us is made in his image. God is in us, and every single human being is a reflection of God himself. It is because of this that we know all life is sacred, especially human life. Each person has a dignity greater than any life form on the planet and has a responsibility to respect every human life, including his or her own. Your homework was to become familiar with the story, Horton Hears a Who. In this story, Dr. Seuss shares that a person is a person no matter how small. And even though you can't hear or see them at all, a person's a person, no matter how small. This is a great starting place for our lesson. In the story, Horton was taking care of a tiny speck, which was actually the city of Whoville. The characters, Horton's supposed friends in the story, had a hard time believing that there was life on that little speck that was barely a visible dot on the clover that Horton carried. But that speck was the city of Whoville. That speck contained life, small as it was. Human life begins in sort of the same way. We all start out as tiny specks, don't we? When human life starts, at its beginning, like Whoville, it is just a tiny speck. In this case, a mere atom. From the first moment of conception, life does begin, and we are called to take care of it, even if it is too small to see. Just like Horton cared for that speck, we are called to care for all life, because all human life is sacred. It doesn't matter who we are talking about. All humans, regardless of their age, gender, ethnic origin, social status, or their physical or mental abilities, each and every human being from the time they are a tiny speck is a child of God. And each one of us is important, vital even. Do you ever wonder if life really matters? All the time. How important can my life be? Would anyone even notice if I disappeared? We all feel invisible at times, like no one takes notice of us or that we don't really matter. I think that's a common experience for everybody at some point in their life. The great news of our faith is that God the Father created us, as well as all the beauty of the entire universe. So we think of the stars, we think of the planets, we think of mountains and in oceans and fields, all the beauty that surrounds us, and we are part of that beauty. In fact, God made us in his image and likeness, and so we are the crown of creation. So in so many ways, other people measure us by standards of wealth or looks, popularity, athletic prowess, things that this world thinks important. You know what? God doesn't care about any of that, because God looks deep inside of us and says to each one of us, you are beautiful exactly as you are because we are made in his image and likeness. That's the good news of our faith. And when we feel down on ourselves, when we feel depressed, when we feel that our life doesn't matter, we need to go back to that central conviction. We matter because we are made in the image and likeness of God. I got a great birthday card last week, it said, God did not imagine the universe without including you in it. Isn't that a great thought? That God didn't plan all of this without including you and me. And so we are the crown of his creation. It has nothing to do with what we do. It has everything to do with who we are. We are children of God. And it's that great news that makes us want to get up and dance when we think about it. That God could love us that much, that we are made in his image and likeness. It's the year of faith, and we're connecting Christ and the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Ignite your faith. Share this video with a friend.
and spark up a spirited conversation today. So what's the next C4 all about? We invite you to come back and see for yourself. God did not imagine a world without you in it. We are all a part of his plan. And someone does not include you in a plan unless you have a role to play. So we're going to spend some time figuring out what our roles are in this plan during the rest of our time together. We are all made in God's image. We are all his masterpieces. But sometimes we don't treat each other that way, do we? Sometimes we are not very kind to one another. That was beautiful, Horton. Rope him! Cage him! Yeah. Burn that speck in a pot of boiling bees on that oil! Sometimes we are not very kind to one another. We see this in our schools, in our neighborhoods, on our sports teams, in our workplaces. Bullying is everywhere. In the victims of bullies are often those who are most vulnerable in our society. Those who are different, someone who's new, someone might, that might have special needs, someone who might think that they have no friends. Horton knew that that speck couldn't protect itself without his help. And he knew that it was worth fighting for, and he was willing to speak up and do something about it. At some point, we've probably all experienced a time when, like Horton, we had to speak up for someone who could not defend themselves. Go ahead, rope me, cage me, do whatever you want. But there are people on this speck, and they have a mare who has 96 daughters and one son named Jojo, who all share a bathroom, whatever that is. And even though you can't hear or see them at all, a person's a person, no matter how small. Horton knew that that speck was worth fighting for. And we know that because every human is made in the image of God, that every human is worth fighting for. The Catholic Church teaches that we are called to protect and defend all human life at every stage and in every condition. Many of the problems that we see in the world today arise from a failure to protect and respect the human dignity of all persons. These problems go against the fifth commandment. Do you know what that is? The fifth commandment simply states that you shall not kill. So we're gonna take a minute to identify some of these problems, problems that go against the fifth commandment. I'm going to give you an example to get you started. Child abuse. Here is a situation throughout our world where human life needs defending. The dignity and worth of children where there is abuse is not being upheld. And this is just one example. There are many other kinds of situations where this is the case, where human life needs defending. 